So uh, again, I'm Bob Norton from the North Shore Medical Center. I have the pleasure this evening of introducing our keynote speaker, my colleague and friend, Dr. Gary Coplin Kaplan. Gary, as uh, many of you know, is the uh, chairman and CEO of the Virginia Mason Health System in Seattle. Gary is a fellow of the American College of Physicians, a fellow of the American College of Physician Executives, a founding member of the Healthcare CEOs for Health Reform. Gary has held leadership positions in the uh, National Patient Safety Foundation, the Medical Group Management Association. He is the uh, current chair of the Board of Trustees of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. Gary is a member of the IOM. And in a recent uh, survey, Gary was ranked the number three physician executive uh, in the US of the top 50 most influential physician executives. I'm gonna stop there. The list of those kinds of accomplishments that they gave me for Gary goes on for two more pages, but I'm sure Gary would want to uh, limit that and talk more to you about the kinds of things that he and his team are doing at Virginia Mason. During Gary's tenure at uh, Virginia Mason, uh, the institution has received numerous awards uh, during that period of time. That list, too, uh, covered about a page and a half of what uh, they gave me for my introduction. As I looked at it, the one that I thought was most noteworthy is that Virginia Mason is uh, one of only two hospitals uh, to be named in the top 10 hospitals of the decade by the LeapFrog Group, which is a group that we're all very familiar with. For the last uh, 14 years, I think is the number, uh, Gary has led Virginia Mason on a quality journey applying the Toyota production system improvement methodology to healthcare. And we've had the privilege at the North Shore Medical Center of being joined with Gary and his team on that incredible journey. Uh, that incredible journey has been uh, really uh, life-changing for many of us at the North Shore Medical Center as we've worked with our partners at uh, Virginia Mason. The most important part of that life-changing work has, was a uh, trip that a few of us in my team got to take with Gary and his team at Virginia Mason to Japan to study firsthand the uh, work that was done at the Toyota plant and other uh, manufacturing plants in Japan and to learn how to apply these improvement techniques to the US healthcare system. And uh, it was literally a life-changing experience to uh, um, have that experience with Gary and his team. I believe when the uh, history is finally written of uh, the changes that have been made in the healthcare system in the 2000s and beyond, that the work that Gary and his team have pioneered around applying the uh, Toyota production system improvement methodology to healthcare will be one of the major facets in making healthcare in America a higher value proposition for the patients and families that we all have the privilege of serving. So before I turn this over to Gary, I'll tell you just one more personal aspect of this uh, journey that uh, Gary and I and our teams have been on together, and that is during this journey that uh, Gary and I and uh, our teams got to take to uh, Japan, Gary was always very proud of uh, the Japanese uh, culinary experiences that we uh, got a chance to uh, participate in during that trip, trip to Japan. It included uh, putting in front of us many evenings uh, many things to uh, consume that to me looked like they were still actually moving. And I have a specific rule that I don't eat anything that's still moving. So I actually survived during that two week period in Japan by finding a McDonald's after each uh, <laughs> meal that we had uh, in a Japanese restaurant with Gary and the team. I can assure you all that a uh, McDonald's number three special is the same in Japan as it is in the US of A. And so I hope that Gary uh, appreciated the meal tonight. There was nothing on my plate that was moving, I know. I'm not sure about Gary's plate, but how about a warm Boston strong welcome for Gary Kaplan. Gary. Well, thanks, Bob. Um, I always knew if we couldn't find Bob Norton where he was, that was at McDonald's. But thanks for that introduction, and thank you to the Donahues as well. Um, it's a real honor to be with you all tonight to recognize the great work of medi medically induced trauma support services. 
It's especially meaningful for me to be here tonight with so many colleagues who share my passion for patient safety and the impact of medically induced trauma on so many patients, their families, and their care providers. Many of you have been an inspiration to me and my colleagues at Virginia Mason over so many years, and I do want to thank Linda for your vision and passion. It's been great working together with you over many years on the National Patient Safety Foundation Board, and I want to thank also my colleagues and staff of the boards of NPSF and IHI. I especially want to thank Lucian for your continuous inspiration, never-ending passion for our patients and our care teams. It's a real privilege to know you and have worked with you now over uh, so many years. I understand how important the work of MITS is because like many of you, my organization and I have been devastated by a medically induced trauma. And it's humbling and really an honor to be able to speak tonight at this very special event, which is, has a theme of leading by example. As we heard many years ago from the IOM report to Air is Human, more than 100,000 Americans die each year from an unanticipated healthcare event. But what we now know, and we've already heard that tonight, is those numbers were woefully understated. And as hard as it was to believe over 15 years ago, we also now know that despite the very best of intentions and caring, the patients are dying because of our errors in every hospital across the country. And of course, these instances are devastating to family members and loved ones. I can tell you from personal experience that they're also extremely painful to our dedicated clinical teams who enter medicine to help and heal and who tragically sometimes harm patients. The numbers are so big that it almost defies comprehension. But let me share with you for just a couple minutes the very human story of harm that brought the reality home for me and for my organization and continues to resonate for our teams and motivate and inspire us every day. This is Mary McClinton. Mary came to my organization, Virginia Mason, in November of 2004 for a serious but routine procedure, something that we do almost every week. Following a preventable medical error, she died while in our care. She arrived at Virginia Mason for a routine, yet invasive radiology procedure to treat a brain aneurysm. The interventional radiologists planned to insert a stent to keep blood flowing freely through an artery and then inject dye, enabling the team to see her bloodstream flow during an imaging test. The procedure went well, but when Mrs. McClinton awoke from anesthesia, she was in terrible pain. This was unanticipated. The clinical team worked feverishly to sort out what was happening and to save her life. The interventional radiologist did what every Virginia Mason clinician does while caring for a patient in the midst of an unanticipated outcome. He called a patient safety alert. This is a process we put in place more than two years following our very first trip to Japan in 2002, where we saw how Toyota embedded safety in every step of every process. By process of elimination, the team determined that instead of the harmless dye used to make her blood flow visible, she was injected with the deadly cleaning solution that was used to disinfect the site of the stent insertion. Over the next several days, despite the tireless efforts of multiple clinical teams, her organs shut down and she died. Mary McClinton was a mother, a foster mother, a beloved member of her church, and a community activist and leader who died of a preventable error while in our care. We failed her, and it was the darkest and saddest time in our history at Virginia Mason, and for me as our leader, 
It was a time of tremendous pain and intense reflection. As many of you know, my organization, the Virginia Mason Health System, has received national attention, now all of you know that, for adopting the manufacturing principles of the Toyota production system. We're proud. We're proud that we were the first and are the longest to sustain this comprehensive management system. And we prou are proud that others have embraced this system for their organizations. A key feature of the Virginia Mason production system is our patient safety alert system, which places responsibility on each and every team member to be a safety inspector. We introduced the patient safety alert system in 2002 after traveling to Japan and seeing Toyota factory workers pull a cord to stop the entire assembly line when they experienced a problem of any sort. When this happens, music plays. They used to play Camp Town Ladies, and now they play It's a Small World, you know, that annoying Disneyland song. <laughs> and supervisors rush to the work site to assist in correcting the defect so it does not pass downstream, down the production line. That's very different than what we've historically done in medicine, retrospective quality assurance. We said we want real-time quality assurance. And we realized that Toyota took better care of their cars than we did our patients. So we resolved then and there, I'll never forget it, that last day of that first trip to Japan, we resolved to change that reality. So we developed the patient safety alert system to stop the line when any situation presents the risk of harm to our patients or our team members, or even when our team members have any concern that they might not be able to do their job safely. Recently, we've also put in place our FAST team, our family activated safety team, so the family members can also pull the cord if they have any concerns. And our commitment as leaders is to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The tragedy with Mrs. McClinton was especially traumatic for us because we naively thought we were on the road to high reliability and that we had a system in place that would prevent this kind of mistake from happening. We were wrong. And we learned in a very sobering, tragic fashion that we were wrong. It took, it took the shock of Mrs. McClinton's unnecessary death for us to realize that the norms of American medicine, the closing of ranks and the hiding of the truth from patients and families had to change. And so we took responsibility for the error that caused Mrs. McClinton's death. We apologized to her family. We apologized to our community. We apologized to our organization for failing to be the best we could be. In the days that followed, more than 40 television stories aired. I got emails from Europe, how could you have killed this patient in your hospital? Uh, there was a story on Good Morning America where our medical director of quality appeared alongside Mrs. McClinton's son, Gerald. Not long afterwards, we learned that a similar tragedy had occurred at another healthcare institution in Seattle. That organization chose to remain silent. And if they had not remained silent, Mary McClinton may have lived. Change takes time. But at Virginia Mason, we made this heartbreaking event our rallying cry, and we redoubled our efforts to keep all of our patients as safe as possible. In 2006, Virginia Mason was featured in a PBS special, Remaking American Medicine. After the series aired, the producer, Mark Schaefer, sent me a letter. He wrote me that his sister-in-law, who is a physician in the San Francisco Bay Area, had read a note that someone had posted to a bulletin board in the operating room at her community hospital describing what happened to Mrs. McClinton at Virginia Mason and cautioning providers at her hospital to prevent the same situation from happening there. It was a great reminder 
for me, of the importance and the power of transparency. And transparency starts within our organization, and it starts with each and every one of us. Since, 19, since 2002, in an effort to eliminate every foreseeable potential for harm, Virginia Mason team members have called more than 50,000 patient safety alerts. As you might imagine, it took considerable, and this is since 2002, it took considerable cajoling, courage, and humility for us to become comfortable shining the light on our weaknesses. But the memory of Mrs. McClinton reminds us all that the call to create the safest possible system for our patients is a goal much higher and more rewarding than anything that serves our individual pride. We are better individuals for our collective efforts. With Mrs. McClinton's family by our side, we established the Mary L. McClinton Patient Safety Ward at Virginia Mason. This award recognizes the work of an, of an outstanding team that has shown extraordinary achievement in the elevation of patient safety. We awarded the 2014 Mary McClinton Award to our complex spine team, with which worked with determination to mitigate every possible risk to patients during this long and complicated surgery to correct or perhaps even reshape the spine and reduce pain. The Mary McClinton Patient Safety Award is the most sought after recognition in our organization. And one of the things that makes it so special is that we're every year joined by Mrs. McClinton's family, in particular her sister and her sons and her oldest son, Gerald, who is a central part of the annual presentation. Three years ago, Gerald asked, may I speak at the ceremony? And for the last three years, he has spoken. And despite his family's heartbreaking past with our organization, Gerald chose a team at Virginia Mason to perform a surgery he received a couple of years ago because he believes in the work we are doing to create the safest possible environment for every patient in our care. Think about what that meant to our team to our people to have Mary's son publicly state his confidence in, what's, in, in their work and what, what's happening at Virginia Mason. Inspired by the admiral work of MITS, we took another step forward last year by developing a process to support patients, family members, and the entire healthcare team involved in an unanticipated outcome. We developed a process we call SOS, or Synchronized Ongoing Support. This system brings support to patients, families, and care team members immediately at the first sign of need by a page or a call to a patient safety team member. Representatives from patient relations, patient safety, clinical and administrative leaders, and perhaps for many, most importantly, the chaplain quickly gather to assess needs and provide timely support. And I know every person in this room understands how important this work is to everyone involved in the care experience. As I reflect on our progress at Virginia Mason, I'm proud. I'm proud we are viewed as a model for patient safety and that organizations from across the United States and around the world come to visit us and study our Virginia Mason production system. It's actually a great I irony that every year representatives from Japanese hospitals visit us in Seattle to learn about how to apply the Toyota production system principles to healthcare. And although this recognition is gratifying, we're humble every day because we realize that so much work remains to create a truly defect-free experience, truly what we would call a perfect patient experience for every person in our care. Looking out at each of you, people who have a deep understanding of the experiences I've shared tonight, I come away more inspired, more inspired to go home and continue to work hard to make that difference, to create that defect-free place 
for every one of our patients and every one of our people. Our communities and our patients are depending on us, all of us, and we can't let them down. So thank you to Linda Kenny, Dr. Rick Van Pelt, uh, Winnie, um, all of you, your tenacity, courage, it's commitment to life-changing work, and I'm very proud to be part of that cause. Thanks very, very much for inviting me to be with you tonight.